albatross. <laughs> albatross. <laughs> albatross. Two chalk horses, please. I haven't got chalk horses. I only got the albatross. <laughs> albatross. What, what flavour is it? It's a bird, isn't it? It's a bloody seabird. It's not any bloody flavour. Albatross. All right, hey everyone, welcome back to the shop. Today is the day we're going to start uh, putting together the albatross. Uh, now what I'm going to do on this one is I'm not going to start with, uh, let's just call it an atypical uh, unboxing, just to show you how everything's packed. Uh, I already took everything out of the box. Everything was packaged up real nice. Uh, it's got a couple little, I'll show you sometime on down the road. It's nothing that's going to affect the plane, it's just it's how how certain things were attached. Um, and like I said, it's not going to affect the way the plane flies. It's just that you look at it and it's, uh, you know, quality control out of China. But uh, uh, structurally, the plane's awesome. Uh, even with uh, the initial uh, checking of, of parts, just kind of putting everything together, um, I don't think there's going to be an issue at all uh, putting this plane together. Now, I have heard that there will be something with how the wings attach. Um, now, because I'm not doing a, uh, an unboxing, if you guys want to see a couple of good uh, channels that do a really good unboxing, uh, with John V, John V H R C is what I believe it is. Um, and that was the first website that I hit, the first YouTube, um, where he did the maiden flight. And as soon as that was one of as soon as I saw that maiden flight, you know, half hour later, I, I, I purchased the plane. Um, the other guy is, uh, um, and I don't want to get this wrong, but I think it's Jeff's Custom RC. Uh, it looks like he's relatively new to the uh, uh, to the YouTube world. I mean, I've been doing this now for I don't know how many years, and uh, you know I got 137 subscribers. So you can see I'm not trying to make money on this. Uh, just trying to help people want to get into the hobby. Um, but I'll leave links for those uh, two guys down in my uh, description. Um, and as things progress along the way, um, you guys will notice that that if if I discuss somebody else's uh, YouTube channel, uh, it's ninety percent of the time there's going to be something down in the description just so you guys can go ahead and it's a link to it. You, you can click on it and then you can go ahead and look. So, anyway, enough jibber jabbing. Let's get back to work. So now what we're going to start doing is we're going to start painting some foam. Uh, the changes that I wanted to make on my plane uh, in regards to the way that Johnny's uh, his albatross is going to look. And once again, that's just so that we could differentiate when we're flying uh, formation, or at least close together. So, um, what I've got here on my workbench, and I'll show you through the other camera, that's not my plane. That's Johnny's. He dropped it off this morning. Uh, we got it painted, and I, I want to show you the issues we had with the paint on the bottom of the plane. I mean, it was all properly prepped and everything, but I'll show you on the other camera. Anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this over. I want to show you what we're going to be doing, what I'm going to be doing to mine. Let's see how well we can get these cameras set up. So that will work good with that camera. Oh, both cameras hopefully set up somewhat well. What I'm going to do with mine, and not trying to make a mess and move his stuff around too much, with the vertical stabilizer and the horizontal stabilizer, just kind of get this somewhat lined up with the hope it's going to work well with how I'm going to try to show you. Because this has to be glued in, apparently. I have not read the PDF instructions. I have to download online. So anyway, all right. So what I'm going to do, where the bottom of his plane is yellow, up on the top here, it's going to be white. So this is going to be white with a yellow stripe, just above the USS Curitoc. i got to look at that one. i got to figure out what that is. Um, because this is a float plane. They don't, they don't land, so I'm guessing this is because it's a boat. It's a flying boat, so they give it a the boat uh, pseudonym on it. So anyway... So this is going to be white up on the top with a yellow stripe. I'm going to do the same thing to the horizontal stabilizers. It's going to be, there's like a little seam line. It's going to be white up to this point, and then I'll have about another, you know, half inch yellow line here. So that's the differentiation on my plane, is that the tail is going to be different, where his, the bottom, is going to be different. So now, my plane's out in the other room. 
and I've got to get this all taped up and spray it. And I'll bring you guys back when I'm spraying this. This one took me a little while to get everything properly taped and uh, we went ahead and sprayed it. And this is the unfortunate part. Even though it was all cleaned, and hopefully you can see it well, we had fish eye. We had a couple little spots on fish eye that we're going to fix. And up here in the front, you can see, and it even started to fish eye down here uh, on the bottom. So what I'm going to do is we'll come in with this, do a quick little wet sand with it, and then I'll use my, just in these areas where I want to try to see if I can crack down some of it, because you, you can't. You don't have feel of vision it's bumpy here so i want to go ahead and sand this down and then i'm just going to come in with some norton it's a it's like a double lot or triple lot it's a sanding pad they work really good and these for everybody watching this video if you ever decide to get a warbird world war ii anything you want where the finish even if it's sorry about that even if it's like uh ultra coat mono coat and and it's got and it's too shiny you can crack the glaze off with this. You just come in the top and just go ahead and sand it and it dulls it down and it makes the plane look so much, uh, so much more realistic instead of having a shiny paint job that looks just the way that they were painted back in the day. So, so anyway, yeah, so I wanted to show you guys this is that it was, uh, you know, it was probably about 15, 20 minutes worth of taping and everything looked good. Even this part here looked good up in the front when we got done spraying it. And just as it started to dry, it just started. So this is something, the first coat, it didn't really pop up. We didn't see it. It was a second coat when it came up. So um, that's why I bought this Rust-Oleum Primer. So we're going to scuff this up. We're going to prime it to see if we can keep this from coming back. And if you notice, it's the same color as the paint. So... We're good to go with that. All right, let me show you guys one of the little secrets I got when it comes to painting foam. Uh, because with these these newer foamies, um, they're really, the hinge line itself is made out of foam. So uh, this is the little trick I use so that you can get good paint lines and not have to worry about the overspray. It's not just used for wiping your butt. This is what I do. As right, you can see it on this side, I just come in, I cut a little piece in half, quarter it up, stick it down inside the little crack, different crack, stick it down inside the crack, and then just uh, grab a little piece of masking tape, put that over the top, and then, because this is a good side to see it through, see, it completes, so no overspray, I'll get it, there we go, no overspray uh, can go underneath that. So then I'll just take, uh, the covering up on the top and then at this point it'll just kind of go across such as this so when you go ahead and spray it um, there's nowhere for that to get underneath it that was it learn something new every day bring it back when I spray all right I got everything sprayed we'll do a quick little unwrap I did the uh, I did the elevator and they came out pretty nice uh, I have not put the yellow on that'll come later on now what I did is it's a, uh, I had to try something just because you saw what happened on Johnny's plane. Um, when I sprayed, when I sprayed the uh, uh, Rust-Oleum on, I, it was a gloss and it was a little bit too glossy for me because it didn't seem that it really wanted to me, it didn't want to come close to matching that color white. Because of the gloss, it made it look darker than that because that's almost like a matte. It, it, it's almost like a matte finish, and I don't have any matte finish white. So what I did is I took uh, some of my old, old, this is from back in my, uh, geez, I want to say this is probably going back about four or five years to my uh, quarter scale Piper Cup, the clip wing, the red and white one. That's what I used sprayed that with, and I have this one in another full can. So I did a test piece. And of course I did it on top of this box and it's hard to see this white because well the box is white but I sprayed uh, a good coat of the Rust-Oleum on it, let that set up for about 35-40 minutes and then sprayed on some Krylon. It didn't lift peel but it did dull it out. It took, it took the glossiness off. Now it's closer to a matte finish. So uh, it it's, makes, makes me feel happier. 
Right. And you. let's try to get started in five, four, <laughs> three, two, one. <laughs> Everyone, welcome back to the shop. Today we're gonna we're gonna try working on Johnny's here. There's Johnny. Hey. hey. <laughs> All right, we're gonna we're gonna try to do a little bit of work on the uh, the albatross uh, because right now the the warlock's sitting over in the. Uh, in the garage area where it's cold, I've got to do some painting today, and hopefully, it, it, hopefully it'll warm up a little bit later on this afternoon in, in the, my little spray booth area. Yeah, we do live ahead. in Illinois, northern yeah. Illinois. Yeah, and it's 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 not even going to get into the forties today. So, <laughs> <laughs> and it's the last day of April. Yeah. All right, Johnny's already got his his wing together, and uh, John, I want to say it's John HRV. I'm probably wrong on this one, John. If if you're watching this, I apologize. He's the guy whose video I watched, and that was the, my deciding factor. Because Johnny, Johnny sent me a link to it, and he's like, we want to get these things. And I went and watched the one video, and, and sent him a text message to say, yes, you need to get it now. So that's, that's how we got these things. So um, anyway, the little teeny things that, uh, that, that almost everybody's come across on these has to do with how everything hooks up and comes together. And... We're not going to record the whole building of the wing, but as we as the, as the little problems show up, uh, we're going to let you know how how uh, John Johnny did it. Uh, John did it, and I think the other John RC, uh, another another guy who just recently, as of uh, yesterday, which is the 28th, uh, had his maiden flight on his. Um, and I think it's just something that everybody's coming across, and it's just how to go ahead address it and make it work. So. So anyway, we're going to start shoving this thing. Oh, real quick. <laughs> Here's the fun part of the hobby. They say you need two of these things. It's a Y connector. All right. This is what I do to my Y connectors because I have almost no Y connectors in any planes. Um, here, here's the two good ends. A lot of times I'll go ahead and snip off an end if I need to make a quick little uh, adapter, even if it's for just a charge adapter. Um, uh, for a uh, for a battery pack, it's regardless. We had to find I had no Y connector, so we had to find out how to do it. What we ended up doing was we took one off of this end, and I just cut it off. And this is what it looks like when you cut it off. I just used some little I don't even know who it is. Whatever you want to call these little teeny snippers. Uh, just lightly cut it, just so I could pull the sleeve off and then figure out how to get them off because the sleeve does not want to come off. Now, I'll take a picture of it too just in case it doesn't come up looking well in the video. But you may be able to see, if I can get the focus, right there. You see those two little dots on the back side? That's where the little teeny pins, the little angled pins that come through. To get these things off, it's kind of a pain in the butt. You've got to come in and try to push that so that you can release it. And it's really hard to do. Um, on, on these, we couldn't do it with uh, just using an X-Acto, sliding it in there to see if we can get it to pop. Uh, what you I may want to tell them, uh, be careful, their fingers would exact yeah. with this. See, all my fingers are still good. <laughs> it's kind of freaky when you're pushing an X-Acto towards your fingers. Um, what I ended up doing is coming in with the 16th drill bit on, the, uh, on my little uh, uh, Dremel tool and just kind of working it side to side just so I can get it to pop the edges and slid the top half out, the bottom half out. And that's how we found out what it looked like on the inside. So uh, so if you do happen to do that in the future, like I've done for many years, uh, you, you can still fix it and not have to buy some new ones. So anyway, I do now have two. They're probably longer than I need, but uh, we're gonna go with it. Right now, it's not on the plane. We're just gonna put the wing together and make sure everything is set up properly with it. So, bring it right back. Alright, this was the problem that everybody seemed to have is that when you slide this together, I should probably get you closer, but anyway, when I slide this closer and everything lines up, what it is is they're a little bit too far apart and if you see the little gap between the two, and it's going to be kind of hard to see it, um, I'll put it in a picture. Um, this little gap right here is about how much you need to grind back on. They they say use a file and be very careful. Me, I, I don't have a file that small, so I'm not going to be careful. I'm just coming in with a Dremel and the same little sixteenth of an inch uh, uh, drill bit in here and just being very careful with what I'm doing.
Really screwed up. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you heard Johnny whispering, make sure you're grinding the right side of the hole. Because if you, if you grind, so what you want to do is you want to get the side of the hole closest to the wing tip. Um, and just don't make the hole bigger, just elongate it. He says, he says, he, 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 says he says, knowingly. Like the sound. It's going in tight, and that is that is a different sound. That's what you what it's doing is it's binding. Um, so it could probably lessen it a little bit more. Um, it's because it's going into a brass fitting uh, between the brass and then the the anodizer or the, the plated uh, three mil. It's uh, they're dissimilar. They don't like each other. <laughs> So let's see what uh, let's see how the front is, and I may have to go ahead and do the same thing on the front as well. Let's see if we don't if we don't hear the squeak, we'll be good on this one. There's the squeak. All right, so I'll just go ahead. I'll take a little bit more out, and we'll make one more pass, and then uh, see how it is. Oh, that was on the whole time. <laughs> good. All right, as you probably might have seen. <laughs> now what we did was. Uh, Decided to go ahead and run a tap down through it just to make sure that everything was clean because the way it was binding at the bottom, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it here. It looked like the threads. Come on, focus. I know you can do it. Right about anyway, uh, they were starting to get a little bit boogered up on the end of it, so I decided to go ahead and I used the regular three mil and it was binding up too. So I figured let's go ahead and run a three mil uh, tap through it, and if anybody else decides to do this. Not product endorsement. <laughs> Not getting paid to do this. <laughs> anyway, um, just pay very close attention to what you're doing. Don't run a drill bit all the way through it. It does have a plastic bottom on it, or at the top of the wing there's plastic, but just be very careful with what you're doing. With the hopes that this will work. Uh, I hear no squeakies. Oh. Okay, that's all we needed. I have to borrow your three mil. Yeah, take it home with you. I will, because <laughs> I got a little squeaky. Because I did both of them. So Boy, does that yeah, sound so nice. I, after, after I ground them out, they do, and it all goes in. Just and it, Pull the it, wing a little. And it, and it fits great. It ain't it's moving. tight. All right. <laughs> awesome. Okay. We're gonna work on the other side, and then we'll get uh, we'll get everything uh, hooked up electronic wise, and then uh, we'll show you what it looks like. <laughs> all right, you missed it. The other side was fine. We didn't have to make any any tweaks at all. It just went, everything slid in was uh, was set up very nicely. Let me fire up Mr. GoPro here with the hopes that it works. Come on, Mr. GoPro, I got faith in you. It's a good lens cleaner there, bud. Shirt? Your shirt. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> All right. This is what we were talking about. Here's the gap. So we've probably got maybe 30 seconds, 64th. It's a little bit more gap in the back than on the front. And it's how, how they've got these pieces set in. On this side here, we've got probably the, I don't know, the 64th or less gap. It's it's probably 20 thousandths maybe at the most. Uh, this side here went in. I didn't have to do a, um, to do any grinding to, to slot it. So, so we're good. All right. So this part is done. Now let's get some electronics hooked up. All right, hey, we're trying, we're, we're, we're trying to, we're trying to put the uh, the tail back on, and uh, the fun part is trying to get these long screws set up to slide on in to the bottom and have it stick out the top, and then what we're holding these things in place while we glue the tail on. Once again, it's not just for wiping your butt. 
we're taking some toilet paper, making some, just wadding it up a little bit. And when this gets pushed through, just pushing this up behind the screw just to hold the screw in place. So as we get everything set up, we've got something holding it there. It's genius, isn't it? <laughs> Telephone! All right, once again, we're playing for failure. All right, the way that's... The instructions are okay. It's better than most of the older stuff. Um, some, of the, some of the little things you kind of want to try to figure out for yourself. This is where it's going to get kind of interesting. Uh, it's, it's almost like a two-person job. This will get attached in here. We've put the glue up on the bottom of there and then on the tail. Uh, in the very rear section and on the, on the fuselage in the very front section. So it's just in the middle here where it's at. So now we're going to try to get this thing hopefully attached. I'm not sure if you can see. Yellow? Hang on. Oh, you got it? Yeah. Okay, good. Here, hold on to this piece. Bring it down. It is a two man process almost. I suppose you can get this hooked up first and then put the glue on, but why does that just not feel good to me? There it is. Okay. Careful. Figure out how we want to lay this down inside here. Well, I think it will go. There's a spot where it will catch to go all the way in. You yeah, know, just trying to get it down in there. Into the fuse. There we go. There you go. And then the wires will just fall into the slot. Be careful of that back screw. Ah, damn it. Damn it. Now you got to get it just right. Yeah, I guess gluing this on would be the best way to do it instead of constantly screwing on and off. Mm -hmm. So, that was okay. a good call. Good there. Now to see if we can. Where's the screwdriver? Get through here. I got it? this for you. All right. Something where I can see what I'm doing. Uh, Screw still up here. Well, of course, it's being held by yeah. the forceps there. Alright. Try to hold it gently. Oh, man. Yeah, I'm not going to lose that screw. No, we okay. still got it. I can see the glue is starting to come out on the... Uh, oh, course. there we go. Now it's firming up. Okay. It's a fun part. You wonder if you're stripping it out or if it's just snugging up. Okay. Back up on the stand and see Ooh. how quickly we can clean stuff up. Alcohol ah. works, guys. <laughs> the kind you drink. Man. Yeah, yeah, but how well is alcohol going to work with the paint? Well, maybe. I'm just going to do what I'm doing right now. Let it dry and cut it. Yeah, I'll just pull out what I can and. The bottom's not bad at all. No, nope. it's not coming, it's not squishing out on this side. Well, that ain't too shabby. No, yeah, that's why the stuff dries nicely. Yeah. Oops. Get that out of there. A little toilet paper. A little glue. Alright. Okay. It's feeling pretty good to me. Let's see. Tight. So the reason why we're trying to do this is we want to get a we want to get a, a tip tip to tail. We want to find out how well everything is set up on the front. You know, it's, it's an RC plane. It's a foamy. Right. 
I'm not riding inside that one. I'm on the outside. <laughs> so um, if it's a, if it's a little bit off, it, it's really not going to affect uh, the way it flies. It, it should be fine. I've I've flown planes that people have broken, and the tail wasn't just a little bit twisted. It was a whole lot <laughs> twisted. So and it flew fine. I mean, you know, you you weren't going to be able to do good knife edges or anything with it, but in level <laughs> flight, they flew great. So anyway. How do you guys like the tail? Johnny wishes he had one like that. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of jumped the gun. And as usual, Bud put the head to work. Let's see. Let's see if we can get you I'm sorry I didn't do it like that. And that just had to do with putting the red, excuse me, the, the white, the yellow, and the black stripes on the tail. I'm supposed to, so. That will, when it's being flown, um, you'll know which one's mine. So Johnny doesn't have his on the top on the tail, but he's got the yellow up underneath the bottom. So that's all we really need to pay attention to. Just, <laughs> hey, regardless. Just don't fly inverted. <laughs> so, I can still tell. Yeah, that's true. Um, so anyway. All right, it's together. It's the, the electronics aren't hooked up. We just wanted to do this real quick. He's got to get out of here, and uh, I need to get on the other side and start spraying some uh, some yeah. red. So we'll get uh, see what we can get done on that. And uh, of course, that'll be in the Warlock video, uh, <laughs> not in this one. So, so anyway, it's getting closer. Give it a couple more days, uh, and uh, we'll have all the like, excuse me, have all the electronics uh, set up, and then figure. May 1st is tomorrow. Is tomorrow? Yeah. Yeah, May 1st is tomorrow. If we don't get any and, more snow. Yeah, and if we have no more <laughs> snow, uh, we could probably start flying off the pond maybe in July or August. <laughs> yeah. it, should be, it should be pretty good. <laughs> the way we're going. So, all right, anyway, hey, see you guys next time. Donna Shop working on this. Nice seeing everybody.